Hello, let's take a look at half-lives and the random nature of radioactive decay. Now, for our last few radi radiation videos, we've been pretending we've got a radioactive substance, so here it is again, making another appearance. So this is a radioactive substance or a radioactive material, and we said that if we were to look at the uh, atoms of it, we would see that they give off, or the nuclei of those atoms give off or emit, or emit radiation, either alpha, beta, or gamma, or even neutrons, as we said before. We could sketch out those uh, nuclei of those atoms very quickly, just like that, a bit untidy, but we could sketch those out. But in fact, we could do it a little bit more tidily, like this. So here's our radioactive nuclei, which can decay, in other words, emit radiation. And the key point here is that radioactive decay is random. So if you were to try and pick which one of these is going to decay first by turning red, which one would you guess? Well, because it's random, it's very difficult to guess the right one, so you probably did not guess that one. If you were to try again, you'll probably not have guessed it was that one, and if we try to keep guessing, it's going to be very difficult to predict which one is going to go next. So the point we're trying to make here is that radioactive decay is a random process, and it's impossible to predict which atom or which nucleus is going to decay next. We might have a different rate of decay. So the second example here, the decay is happening more rapidly, but it's still very difficult to predict which one is going to go next. There's nothing we can do to increase that rate or slow that rate down, so we can't heat it or cool it or uh, anything like that to change that rate, but it is random and it's not possible to tell which one is going to change first or decay first. However, what we can do is measure the radioactivity of the sample. So we can measure that in something like counts per second using an instrument called a Geiger counter. That's one thing we can do, but we can also measure the amount of time it takes or work out how long it takes for the radioactivity to fall to half of its start value. We call that the half-life. Now, if we want a slightly more formal definition of this word half-life, we've got one here. So the half-life is the mean time it takes for the count rate or activity from a sample containing a radioactive isotope to fall to half of its initial level. Now I like the one above, that's much more simple, and seems to get to the point, is more understandable, but this is the one from the spec, so it might be uh, advisable to learn that one just in case you get asked, asked for a definition. Now, if we know what the half-life is, we can use two bits of information to draw a half-life curve. So, a radioactive isotope has a half-life of two hours, and the start count is 84 counts per minute. Now, just from those two bits of information, we can draw a decay curve to show the radioactive decay of that substance. We know that the count at the beginning is 84, so you can see at the top 84, I've drawn our first point on the graph at time zero. Now, the next thing to know is, or remember, is that the count rate falls to half of that value in two hours. So in this case, half of 84 is 42. So our next point would be at 42, and 2, so 42 count rate and 2 hours. So we can plot a point there. Now, the next thing is that the count rate would fall again by half, but remember it's not falling the other half, it's falling by half of our 42. So that is 21, and then another 2 hours passes. So on our graph we can add 21, and that would be at 4 hours, because that's 2 hours after our initial 2 hours. And our next point then would be at 21 and 4. We can then work out half of 21 again, which is 10.5. And we could plot that on our graph. So 10.5 would go with the time of 6 hours. And we now have enough points to draw our curve. We can join those dots up, but we would do it with a smooth curve like this. And we can just go a little bit further because we can see the pattern that's developing. Now, the main point is every time you show a decay curve like this, a half-life curve, it's always going to be a downwards curve. It might be a little bit steeper or a little bit uh, less steep, but it will always be a downwards curve like this. The only thing that would be different is the values on the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, so we can draw a half-life curve from just two bits of information, the half-life plus the start count. Now that start count could be a percent or a fraction or something like that, but we could still draw that curve. A second thing we can do is to work out the half-life given the decay curve. So here we've got a decay curve, this time the time is in minutes, and the count rate per minute starts at 80. Now to work out the half-life, 
we start at 80 and we work out what half of 80 is, which is quite easily worked out as 40. So from point 40, we go across till we meet the curve. We draw a line across till we meet the curve, draw a line down, and that will give us our half-life. So in this case, the half-life is five minutes. We could just confirm that by halving 40 again. There's our five minutes highlighted there. We could half the 40 again to 20, get our second point, and you can see that's at 10. So again, the interval there between the first half-life and the second, again, is five. And if we really wanted to, we could do a third line as well and confirm that it is five. We could add one more there. Now that value there that we're getting is five all the time, but it might not be exactly the same number uh, depending on the type of graph. But if it isn't exactly the same number, we would get a mean of those numbers to get a mean half-life. Okay, now for the higher tier, we have to be able to do some calculations. So here are a couple of examples. The first one says, if the half-life of a radioactive isotope is 20 days, how much time has passed after five half-lives? So we know one half-life is 20 days. If there's five half-lives that are passed, this is quite straightforward. This is not really higher tier material, but it's a start for the harder stuff we'll do in a sec. It's just a simple case of 5 times 20, which is 100 days. Now, part B says a radioactive substance contains 300 million atoms of a radioactive isotope. Calculate the number of isotope atoms left after five half-lives. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We start off with 300 million atoms. We could actually use an equation to work this out. Now, this might not be the best way because there's so many equations that we have to remember for physics, so you might not want to remember another equation, but I'll show you what it is anyway. The way we would do this is we would get our start number and divide it by 2 to the power n, and n in this case is the number of half-lives that have passed. This is not on your equation sheet. It's not given in the spec. You're not required to learn it necessarily, but if you want to use this for questions like this, you can. So all we would do is put 300 million as our start number at the top and 2 to the power 5 because 5 half-lives have passed. We'd work that out in our calculator and we'd get an answer of 9375,000. So 9,375,000. That's the count rate after 5 half-lives have passed. That's a way of using an equation. There is a second way and I think this is a bit more intuitive. What we would do is take our 300 million and half it five times. Halve that value five times, and that would give us the same answer. Now, the way we do this on our calculator is put in our 300 million, divide by two, and just press equals five times. So one, two, three, four, five. And there we go. We've got the same answer in a slightly more simple way without having to remember an equation. So I would recommend the second way, but obviously if you want to use the other way you can, it's totally up to you. No equation to remember for this strategy. Okay, so let's have a look at one more question. It says, an oak wood door was found at an archaeological site. It was found to contain 12.5% of radioactive carbon, 12.5% of the amount of radioactive carbon in living oak today. So we've gone down to 12.5% of what it is today, we can assume that our living oak today has 100%. So if we start off at 100% and we've gone down to 12.5%, we need to work out how many half-lives have passed. So we go from 100 to 50 to 25 to 12 and a half. So that's one half-life there. Another half-life to get to 25, another half-life to get to 12.5. That's three half-lives that have passed. Now the question tells us how long a half-life is. So we've got three half-lives, each at 5,400 years. So each half-life is 5,400 years as given in the question. So we would do 5,400 5, or 5,400 times three, or three times 5,400. Put that into our calculator, and we get an answer of 16,200 years. Okay, so this is how we would do a question that would be appear like this, and that's the method for doing that one. Okay, so we've gone through half-lives and the random nature and how that works. Uh, we've done some graph drawing and we've done a couple of equations or sorry calculations that you might need to know for this topic.